In this week's episode, I explore whether Andhra Pradesh can exist as a welfare state on its own without development and why the balance between welfare and development is crucial for the growth of a state or a country. Enough is enough. That's the word on every street in Andhra Pradesh where people of the state are silently upset about the worsening state of affairs day by day. From being the most business friendly state earlier to now driving away investors one after the other, Andhra Pradesh looks like a state on a self-destructive mode. From wanting to renegotiate solar and wind power tariffs to cancelling infrastructure projects and taking back the land allotted to companies, the current government has not only set a dangerous precedent for businesses and investors, but it is also, on the other hand, depriving the state's citizens of many lucrative jobs that were on the line. Now, let me explain this to you in a simple way. Usually, when businesses or investors invest in a state or bet on a state, they look for long-term gains. And these are some of the things they look for in the state. First, whether the state is business friendly and the ease of doing business is good or not. Second, they look at the labor laws and the availability of labor in the state. For example, if there are continuous protests from labor unions or interruptions in work, businesses think twice to invest in such states. Third, the law and order situation in a state is very crucial for businesses to invest in the state. Fourth, and the most important point is leadership and governance. If there is a leader who understands long-term vision and aligns the state's goals towards development, then investors will be happy to invest in such states because clearances, approvals and other formalities will be followed and implemented in a hassle-free manner. Now, whether you like it or not, Chandra Babu Naidu was a person to have introduced business-friendly policies in United Andhra Pradesh, which is why Hyderabad today is one of the most happening IT business hubs in India. But that was not the case in the new Andhra Pradesh after bifurcation because one, it was a capitalless state, two, there was lack of resources and infrastructure, three, there were no resources in any way to gain investors' attention. Yet, between 2014 and 2019, the former government made a vision and brought investors who could not only provide jobs to locals but also created indirect employment through other ancillary businesses and trade units. Now, the best example I can think of is Kia Motors. Locals from Anantpur and nearby areas got jobs and their families' financial profiles were lifted. You can check the videos online where many of them are even happy with learning different languages like Korean and getting to work in a culturally diverse organization like Kia right within their own state. And then there were big investments like Hero Motor Corp, electronics and smartphone manufacturing companies, wind and solar energy companies, granite and cement companies, food and aquaparks, textile companies, technology and IT companies. And there was also Medtech Zone in Vizag, which actually helped India during the first wave of COVID. Not just this, but there was also a huge announcement from Abu Dhabi-based Lulu Group for a commercial complex in Vishakhapatnam. That too exited the state along with many big investments, including the state's own Amar Raja Group, which moved its base to Tamil Nadu recently. Unfortunately, the biggest hit for Andhra Pradesh came in the form of interruption of Polavaram project works. After nearly 70% of the works were completed, the current government cancelled some of the contracts and redid the whole process, also interrupting the whole purpose of the project to drought-proof Rail Sima region. And then 
there is the capital issue. By cancelling Amravati as the capital and introducing the three capitals idea, there were severe consequences. The World Bank went back on its $300 million commitment to finance basic infrastructure, roads, water supply, drainage in the capital region. Shortly thereafter, Beijing-based Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank too withdrew its support to Amravati. Not just that, but ever since this government came to power, there has been a constant confrontation with the judiciary. Additionally, the decision to scrap legislative council also brought in a lot of criticism for the current government. Now, if one looks at these kind of decisions, it is clear that the political moves are basically to hit the opposition in a very bad way. All of this may look like just politics to finish the opposition in the state. But focusing only on welfare has actually benefited the party in power. All of this may work in terms of strategy, but eventually the state needs to keep generating revenue to keep the state running financially. Therefore, Focusing only on welfare will not work for the growth of any state, nor will it help the state develop further. A balance between welfare and development and a simultaneous progress between the two is extremely crucial if a state has to progress further. Unfortunately, the current government is putting Andhra Pradesh on the path to financial emergency. But if we stop asking questions, then what would we be measuring and to achieve what outcomes? Simply put, will this not be disastrous for sustainability or for the state's own existence? If politics is only about revenge seeking and undoing all the good policies and decisions made by previous leaders or previous governments, then no state or the country in the world would see any kind of development or progress. So, does an absolute majority actually mean not taking people's confidence into consideration in any way? Well, if you look at this politically, politicians may fight amongst themselves over issues and forget that the very next day. But what about the people whose lives get interrupted and impacted severely by such abrupt decisions? Can political parties or elected governments afford to do this? And even if they do this, for how long? This is one question that Andhra voters have to put for themselves or maybe even question their own conscience. Thank you for listening to this commentary. If you liked it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section.